There's this uh, Muslim creationist whom I've interacted with a few times. I debated him in Houston a few years ago over whether Darwinian evolution is a fact. Now, he insisted on adding the word Darwinian to the topic because he couldn't correctly define what evolution is. He thought that the word evolution by itself meant only microevolution and that Darwinian evolution didn't refer to a 19th century understanding of Darwinian mechanisms uh, contrasted with uh, Lamarckism or anything like that. Rather, he thought that Darwinian evolution meant macroevolution because he's a creationist. He doesn't know what any of these words mean. He's a science denialist. He doesn't have any clue at all. And we saw that in the audience response, both live and online. I'll include links below. He did not do well in that debate, though it seems that he thinks he did. Of course, he misrepresented the scholarship, and he was even corrected on that by a couple of that scholar's students that happened to be in the audience. And this same apologist ran into me in London a few years back and tried to debate me on philosophy, too, but he couldn't even get that right because he got his own definitions swapped. I'll include a philosopher's objective analysis of that discussion in the description below. The point is, this Muslim creationist is no good in either playing field, but because he's a religious apologist, he's unable to admit when he's wrong, which is always I guess he's gotten a little bitter about that, hungry for some way to redeem himself, because he just called me out on Twitter a few days ago saying that he was about to upload a video refuting me, and he just posted that video, naming me in the title, wherein he misquotes me, of course, as creationists always do. He referenced a number of German biology texts from the 1930s, which he thinks proves that the Nazis were evolutionists, when in fact what I said was that Hitler himself was definitely a creationist. Hitler made that clear in Mein Kampf. So someone, someone may ask, why do you have all these Nazi <laughs> even, uh, biology books? Like, what's your interest? Basically, when I, one of the first questions that came to my mind was, were Nazis, well, particularly Hitler, was he an evolutionist? Yeah, that's a big question. That's a massive question. I challenged creationists many times to show me where Hitler ever promoted or accepted evolution. And they pointed me to Volume 2, Chapter 4 of Mein Kampf. There, Hitler mentions evolution and talks about what brought mankind away from the animal world. That does seem like he's promoting Darwin's idea. But in that passage, Hitler specifies that he's only talking about cultural evolution. And he says that man's inventions were the ticket, not any biological process. In that same paragraph, Hitler talks about what everyone who believes in the higher evolution of living organisms must admit. And again, it sounds like he's promoting evolution, but creationists don't recognize their own arguments in Hitler's words, because Hitler is criticizing a belief he does not share, which is why he questions how it all began. Hitler did mention natural evolution, and he equated that to the strong dominating the weak, something that Darwin never said. But it is clear from the context that Hitler is not talking about evolution in a Darwinian sense. Hitler talked about cultural, political, industrial, and military evolution, and the only time he mentioned natural evolution, he obviously meant it in the same sense. For this reason, some translations use the word development instead of evolution. When Hitler mentioned organic evolution, he was talking about management of an organization. Hitler's book never mentions Darwin's name, and only once does it refer to Darwinian evolution in Volume 1, Chapter 11. I cited this passage in a number of videos where Hitler uses the same arguments that creationists commonly do. He says he accepts only microevolution, saying that evolution can only occur within definite limits, producing only subtle variants within their kind. He said that new diversity is limited to rare and inviolable hybrids between those kinds, and he said that the emergence of new species is impossible. Hitler used all these common creationist arguments, saying things that no Darwinist would ever say. I've never seen any statement Hitler ever made where he even acknowledged Darwinian evolution, except this one passage where he rejects it outright. He even said that such evolution is a sin against the eternal creator. Creationists, of course, don't want to admit that Hitler was one of their own, but they have no evidence to excuse him. By their own admission, the same criteria they would use against him would also excuse the majority of mainstream Christians today. The Muslim apologists, of course, ignored all of that, the massive question they wanted to answer, the most important question they had, because you know they, they know the answer, but they can't admit it, of course. Uh, 
And they referred instead to a comment I made that Hitler had banned all of Darwin's books, which was my understanding at the time. However, I have since learned years ago that that part isn't true. <laughs> you can't trust everything you read online. And I'll give him that in all fairness. But in fact, after the Nazi party had secured themselves, when they started implementing their censorship and started doing all of their evil, they had banned at least some books supporting what was back then known as Darwinism. And I explained to the guy during our debate that evolution is not Darwinism anymore, but, you know, trying to teach the willfully ignorant. So the video the apologist made trying to refute me refers to a creationist propagandist named Richard Weikart, and they show, for example, a biology text from 1934, one year after the Nazis seized power. However, according to Nick Matsky of the National Center for Science Education, who wrote a rebuttal of Weikart's propaganda, that was also one year before the Nazis added to their list of banned books writings of a philosophical and social nature whose content deals with the false scientific enlightenment of primitive Darwinism. And that would imply that they're talking about all of it. So I understand where people got that impression from that listing. And the funny thing is that in the video pretending to refute me, that the apologist that, or the, the guy the apologist is talking to points out that that is correct. So as usual, the creationists still, as always, have nothing of substance, neither in support of their own position nor against the mounting scientific evidence that they refuse to acknowledge and will only lie about. And uh, then you have uh, Hans Wernert. He was considered the top uh, archaeologist, anthropologist, and all that kind of stuff at the time. So a lot of the illustrations that they use in these textbooks was from him. So according to him, in fact, he was quite popular with the idea that we and chimps are close. Uh, let's see. He must, there was a tree of life here somewhere. So a lot of people at the time, see the idea that we are closer to chimps wasn't popular. He made it popular there. There we go. Yeah, he made it popular that we are closer to the chimpanzee. And in one of the books, it was showing the different types of humans as well. So it's not just, um, yes. it's the, uh, you know, they're very clear about all these things. Yeah, so this idea that humans are close to chimps, then gorillas, then orangutan, and then the rest, it's actually his idea. He's one of the first to think about it. And so when you open the modern textbooks, it's from him. Now, wh whether they took it from him directly or not, it's not really important. The point You're is, about he thought here, of yeah? it. Well, this is um, Hans Werner, oh, okay. or Werner, or however you say it in German. Yeah. No, Werner was just going off of what Darwin had already pointed out. Darwin wasn't the first to recognize a relationship among the other apes either. That was Carolus Linnaeus, a Christian creationist living over a hundred years earlier. And it's not just an idea that these people had. This was a discovery that has since been confirmed, not just morphologically, taxonomically, through numerous transitional fossils in paleontology, it has been confirmed genetically, too. I'll include one such study on the molecular phylogeny of living primates in the description below. This again proves that evolution is an inescapable, demonstrable fact of population genetics, fossils, and phylogeny, and that it is not the baseless speculation that the apologist's own position is. And uh, we need to get this video to Aaron Ra. So he can stop coming up with nonsense.